Let's talk about cells and the environment today. So, um, just to remind you of some of the things that um, you should know about cells, there's two types. Um, the first type is a prokaryotic cell. Prokaryotic cell. Um, and basically, a prokaryotic cell, its entire um, organism's body is made out of one cell. So it is unicellular. Um, and they make up microorganisms. Most likely, when you looked at the pond water, um, you saw a prokaryotic cell, which it was just little things moving around, just a one blob, like an amoeba or a euglena. Um, and like I said, most pro prokaryotic organisms are made of only one cell, so they are considered unicellular. On the other hand, a eukaryotic cell is a larger cell, and they basically, all of these little cells join together, and they make total organisms like you, me, your dog, and a plant. Um, eukaryotic organisms are multicellular, so each thing that is made up of eukaryotic cells would be considered a multicellular organism. And if you can look at this picture, um, the size is different. So a prokaryotic cell is that size and a eukaryotic cell is um, almost 10 times its size. Now, also there's a couple of different organelles that are in a eukaryotic cell that are not in a prokaryotic cell. So eukaryotic cells have more organelles and organelles are little organs in the cell than prokaryotic cell. But the one that we are going to be focusing on most in environmental science is the cell membrane. So the cell membrane is basically like, I compare it to the security of a household or the police officers in the school or even the fence line around the school. It is the first defense for the cell. The cell has so many things inside of it that helps our bodies maintain a normal life. So the cell membrane is the protectant. It surrounds the cell and allows good molecules to come in and out and pushes out the bad and also prevents any um, unwanted um, molecules from getting into the cell. If you look at the picture, it's Mm, looks like a lasagna or like a piece of cake and how it is layered. It has two sides and that's called the phospholipid bilayer. So it is semi-permeable. We'll talk a little bit about that um, a little further down, but it's a phospholipid bilayer and it has different channels and pumps and basically this is outside of the cell and this is inside of the cell those um, molecules are going to both try to come in and try to go out through either protein channels or through the lipid bilayer here. Smaller, um, mo smaller molecules are going to want to go through the lipid bilayer area right here. They can, can squeeze through like water. Larger molecules will try to go through the transport proteins and the um, protein channels. Okay, and looking at the phospholipid bilayer, basically, um, if I were to go back, this little area here is what I'm showing you here. So we've got the circle area is a phosphate and it is nonpolar. It is polar. And that means that it is okay with water. It's hydrophilic. It loves water. Now, these chains here are made up of fatty acids, which are lipids. Um, an oil is a lipid. Oil and water don't mix. So the tails are nonpolar. They do not like water. So it's lined up where the cell floats around in a lot of water in our body, but the phospholipid bilayer keeps water on either side. Water does not stay in the middle here because the um, hydrophobic tails 
they repel the water. They push the water either direction. Water never stays in the middle of, of a cell membrane. Now, I told you we talk about selective permeability. Um, if a membrane is selectively permeable, only certain things can pass through. This is going to be very important in relationship to environmental science because we're talking about our bodies being exposed to certain things. Well, the cell membrane is so important, its permeability is very important. So, things that um, can passively, meaning not a lot of effort, cross a, that can cross the membrane. We've got nonpolar molecules, small molecules like water, and things that cannot, I mean, that actively cross, meaning it needs to go through those protein channels, are polar molecules, which are um, have a certain charge. And then large molecules also have to be able to fit through um, the protein channel. Okay, we'll do some practice with this, but um, how does this pertain to environmental science? Basically, um, we've already learned about how toxins can, can be in our ecosystem. Basically, there's different ways that toxins can get into an organism either through breathing them in, through absorption, like through your skin, or um, eating, or um, drinking, okay? So when a toxin enters our body, and that would be considered its dose, so if we get a dose of a toxin, it'll go straight into to the cells and really try to get into the cell. Some toxins will actually pretend like it is good for the cell in its shape, and be allowed access into the cell. Once it gets in, that's how we get that response. So when we remember, we learned about dose response. The more the dose, the higher the response. So the more cells that are affected by that toxin, the more sick that we will be. So um, and I, at the bottom it says we can see the external response, but often that is only when the dose has been extremely high. So one small toxin gets into our cells, one cell is, goes crazy. We don't really see the result, but if a lot of toxins get into each cell, then that means we will our whole body will be sick. All right, so what I want for you to do and think about for our discussion is how does the function of the cell membrane relate to community science and toxicology? Um, I've given you a couple of tools for you to be able to kind of understand how toxins affect us on a small scale, but we need to talk about how it's going to affect us on a larger scale, i.e. community science. All right, see you in class.